hey, thanks for joining me. I'm gonna show you how I make a cup on the potter's wheel. And I have about a pound and a quarter-ish of porcelain clay that I've already pre-wedged. Uh, make sure you have water, a bucket of water handy, um, a couple tools like a needle tool, um, a, wooden, a wooden tool, a uh, sponge, any kind of sponge. Um, I have a couple different kinds of sponges. And then at the end, we'll need a wire tool. So first thing is you'll want to get your clay stuck onto the bat and um, you'll need to add a little bit of water. So I take my sponge, dip it in the water, and then I will run it along the bat as it's spinning just to get a little tiny bit of moisture on there, not too much or it'll slide right off. So the clay, uh, stop the wheel and you're gonna slam it into the, as well into the center as you can. Uh, and if you don't quite get it, it's fine because you can, we can tap it towards the center. Uh, just be careful as you're tapping, you also tap a little bit downward because if you just tap right on the side, it's gonna fall right off. So as you tap, kind of tap down. Or use both hands on both sides to kind of It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer you get it, the easier it is to center. I'm gonna call it good there, and you wanna get your hands really wet, even add a little bit of water right onto the clay. Start spinning a little faster than you were before, but don't go, don't overdo it, because that actually is one of the hardest things is if it's out of, it feels out of control and it's spinning too fast, so slower is better. I think the biggest trick for centering is that you want to be stable yourself. Um, you're not gonna be able to center this if you're moving all over the place. So the way I stabilize myself is I wedge my elbow into my hip bone and then I clamp down on it. So this arm, it's like a lever, but it's not gonna like just move all over the place. So clamp it in there, down, and the, the heel of my palm is going to press into the side of the clay. So I'm going to slowly bring my hand towards the clay and you can tell, you can hear that during the spin it it's hitting some of the sides and not all of them, which is good because you don't want to bring your hand to the clay. You want to chain, you want to mold the clay into your hand. When you're ready to add your other hand, make sure it's bracing onto this hand in some way. I like to kind of cross my thumbs, almost like a butterfly sometimes. Um, it's better if your hands are, are connected or otherwise this arm needs to be wedged in somewhere on your body as well so it's not just going all over the place. You really want to have a really good grounded feeling. And if you are centered and grounded, your clay is going to be centered and grounded. So this hand is going to be pressing down on top. My right hand presses down from the top. My left hand presses into the side. And you can kind of go back and forth between the two. So you press a little bit more with your left hand on the side and it sort of raises up. And then you press a little bit more with your top hand, pressing downwards and it flattens down into a more of like a pancake. So I don't know if you can see that, it's a little bit wider and shorter. And this also helps to center. So now I'm gonna kinda push again with this outside hand toward the center. And I'm gonna use this hand to kind of, um, it's almost like a diagonal so it's gonna push on this corner so that it kind of pushes the clay up into a cone-like shape. And that's what helps me center the most. Some people do cone it up with both hands, so they actually can show you. So lots of water all the time. Uh, brace both hands, and you're actually gonna pull the clay up into a cone-like form, just like that and then you push it down. And it also helps to kind of condition the clay if you know, 
maybe spend as much time wedging as you should have, or, you know, feels lumpy or it feels, uh, if there's, it just feels inconsistent and needs a little bit extra love before you get started. So now I'm going to push it back down with this top hand, my right hand. Back into not quite a pancake, but I want to end up somewhere in between. Uh, when you get all this goopy stuff on your hands, make sure you wipe that off. You don't want that on your pot. Wipe that off, get some fresh water. And your clay will be really happy with you. All right, so once you have about this shape and you're centered, you know it's centered because it doesn't look like it's moving when it's spinning. We're going to start by taking our thumbs, putting them together. Make sure both your arms are wedged into you. Thumbs are gonna touch. Um, if you want, sometimes I place the outside of my hand very gently on the outside of the clay just to kind of give myself a gauge, but I'm not pressing, just, just to kind of help me guide my thumbs. So I'm going to take my thumbs and I'm going to press down into the center together, evenly. And you need to add, keep adding water because it's going to get real dry in there fast. All right, so I'm going to keep going, press down further. All right, once you get to a, about the depth that you think you want, we're gonna measure it with our needle tool. Um, once you've had a lot of practice, you don't have to do this, but this is a really good way to understand how thick you are. You take your needle tool, so we're gonna stop the wheel. You're gonna take your needle tool and you're gonna press down into the middle of the pot and then you're gonna set your finger right at the edge of where the clay starts and pull it straight back out and then you'll see exactly how thick the bottom is. So I'm gonna do that on the inside of my pot now. Put my finger right where the clay starts. So that is, that is a good amount for me, I like that. Um, depending on how much you wanna trim, you might want more, you might want less, but that's, that's about the amount I like. I'm going to wipe this off, kind of freshen it up a little bit. All right, so that little needle tool hole, we're going to fill back in and we're just going to spin the wheel and press down. And it's just going to fill right back in like nothing happened. Okay, once we got our depth, we're going to use our left hand on the inside, our right hand on the outside. And the clay is going to come through this way. So it's going to pull through our hands and our hands are going to be like a V and it's going to go through our hands and we're going to slowly uh, pressure them together and then slowly lift up. And that's what it's going to create our walls on our pottery. So make sure your hands are nice and wet. I'm going to press my inside fingers towards my outside fingers, keeping that same depth. And now I'm going to slowly lift up, very slowly. You don't have to do it all at once. That's another problem I see uh, with people just starting is they wanna do it really fast and that is just a recipe for disaster. And the clay does not like to be rushed. Um, you can do that as many times as you want. You don't have to do it all at once. In fact, it's better if you, if you do a few pulls upwards. Um, now that I've kind of opened up the bottom, I like to run my fingers back and forth across the bottom to, to um, just reinforce it a little bit or it, um, it could create cracks later if, if it's not, if there's not enough, um, pressure that's been placed on it. And so I'm gonna take my fingers, I'm gonna start at the very center. And as it's spinning, I'm gonna slowly pull out towards the wall 
And once I get there, then I'm going to slowly push back toward the center to create that opposite, um, that opposite uh, pressure. And that's what's going to really help to prevent all those S cracks that could come later. So center out. I'm going to keep my outside hand here just in case I'm accidentally pressing a little too hard towards the wall and slowly press it back in. I'm just using one finger right now because this is a pretty small base. I'm going to go back and forth a few times so it's really solid. Okay. All right. My base looks good. I'm going to pull it upwards again one more time. So lots more water. You can always add more water if you, if just doing with your hands is not enough. You can take a sponge. You can drizzle a little bit of water right along the edge. All right. So I have my, my left hand and right hand about the same place on the pot, pressing both sides evenly and slowly pulling up as this wheel is spinning and really not spinning that fast. Just go nice and slow. Got a little dry towards the end, so a minute. I'm gonna do a little bit more once I add a little water. Okay, so I'm gonna start here, go a little bit further now that it's wetter. And if it gets a little wide, like this, kind of fluted out, uh, wet your hands down and you can just collar it back in. Just take both hands and press sort of evenly and then it'll just go right back. Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. Take my thumb and just sort of even that out right there. Uh, remember, it's going to shrink a lot. So even if it seems kind of big now, it will, it will this is, yeah, this is going to shrink a lot, especially these small, thin, thin cups do. Okay, both sides evenly. If you don't have enough water, stop and just restart again wherever you are at. See how my thumb is pressing against my right hand? See how I'm doing that? I'm like pressing there. So this arm is wedged in. And this arm is against this hand. It's really important to have be stabilized. Okay. So I got the walls as thin as I want them. Now it's time to give it some shape. If a little bit too much water has collected in the bottom, then you can take a sponge. I have a fancy one on, on a stick, but you can just use a sponge and just Sop that water up because that could also create cracks if there's sitting water on the bottom of your pot. All right. Now it's time to decide how we want to shape it. I do need a little bit more water. So to add that, I'm actually going to use a, the sponges kind of seen better days. Uh, there. Okay, I'm going to use this. I'm just going to hold it against here and it's going to just add a little bit of water. Not a crazy amount, but a little bit just so the clay slides better. Okay, I kind of like cups that have a nice sturdy base. And then they come in for a nice way to hold it. As you're shaping, it's more just pressing whichever hand. So my inside hand is going to press more and that'll push it out. If you want it to be skinnier, then I let my right hand, my outside hand, give a little more pressure. It's much easier to make it wider. 
and it's harder to collar it back in. So be careful. It's sometimes you get to a point of no return and you can't make it skinnier. Like it's just gonna kind of keep getting wider and wider. This is kind of one of my favorite shapes for cups and mugs. It's got kind of a nice rounded feel, a stable base on the bottom, rounded, nice and skinny for the hands. And it's got a little bit of a an edge here. You can turn this into a mug if you want to and add a handle. Or you can just let it be a cup. All right. Uh, I notice I say all right a lot. I don't know if that's just this video or if that's how I always talk. All right. <laughs> I just said it again. If you want to drink out of it, you'll want this edge to be very smooth. And one way to do that is using a chamois. And just drape it across the rim and just let it do its thing. So I kind of drape it, maybe give it just a little bit of not pressure, but I hold it on kind of all, the, both the sides. That's good enough just to make it nice and smooth when you take a drink. The last, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this water in here one more time. The last thing we need to do is to cut it off the bat. Because if you don't, it will likely crack as it's drying because it's stuck so well. The way I like to do that is I take my wooden tool. I can't remember exactly what this tool is called, but it's got an edge. And I'm going to press it up against the bottom of the clay as it's spinning. It'll give it a nice edge down here. Get rid of that. And it's gonna guide my wire tool through. Otherwise, the wire tool has a tendency to lift up as it's going through and it'll cut out maybe more than you want it to. And to be even safer, you can take a pointed tool or a needle tool something and you can even give it even more of an edge to follow. And oops, just kind of nicked it a little bit. It'll be okay. All right, there I go again. I said, all right, you're gonna take your wire tool as it's spinning very slowly. We are going to pull it through and press it down both sides so it stays down on the mat, on the bat. Pull through very carefully. Once you get to the middle, you're gonna know because that cup's gonna want to move on you. And you, then you, as soon as you get past the center, then you gotta pull it fast like that. Okay, awesome. All right, good luck making your cups. Uh, let me know how it goes.